Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we give you the honor, we give you the praise. You are good, you are God, you are almighty. You are all-powerful God and there is none like you. You reign forever and we lift your name up high. The name of Jesus is the name above every name. We lift up the name of Jesus this morning. We lift up the name that is above all name this morning. You alone are holy, almighty Father. We thank you for honoring us with your presence, O oh God. We thank you for honoring us with the Holy Spirit of God. We thank you for the spirit of truth, the spirit of power, the spirit of a sound mind. We thank you, almighty God, that is Amanda. We thank you, Almighty God, that even this day you are in our midst in the name of Jesus. Father, I take this time to pray for your children wherever they are in the name of Jesus. You are the God that healed us. You are the God that sent your word to heal us. I thank you for your healing power this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you for restoration power in the mighty name of Jesus. Have your way, Holy Spirit of the living God, in this place, in the name of Jesus. Move as you will in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Spirit of truth, Spirit of power. You are the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead. And the Word of God says you are living within us. And you give life to our mortal bodies. We thank you, Almighty God. We give you honor. We give you praise. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Have your way in this place. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 We thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord of hosts. Thank you, wonderful God. Thank you, wonderful counselor. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Good morning, saints, in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Woo! It's good to be here. God is good. Hallelujah. Let's clap our hands and give him the praise. For he alone is worthy to be praised. He alone is worthy to be worshipped. Jesus Christ is still King of Kings. He is still Lord of Lords. He is still the Lion of the tribe of Judah. And he will not be defeated. We crown him God. We crown him King above all things. We will never crown any other foreign gods. But only our God. He is the King of Kings. You know, these days, people have crowned coronavirus as king. And we will never. The only king that we will ever serve is Jesus Christ, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. Stay home, recuperate, take your time, think things through. You know, there's something that I read the other day, Iri, when fishermen cannot go to the sea, they repair their nets. So, because we cannot fellowship anymore. This is the time for you to repair your nets. What am I saying by that? As you are sitting at home, it's time for the things that you did and how better you can do them. If you are planning to start a business, this is your time for you to think about it and start handling speak to the Holy Spirit he will guide you maybe you didn't even perform well this is your time do not despair child of God spend your time reading, studying the word of God and in prayer in Jesus name so today we are going to speak about the word of God I have entitled my sermon his words are spirit and they are life the word of God is powerful. The word of God is alive. The word of God is active. Harbala, the, uh, 
the book of Genesis, I just want to show you, Hore, without the, without the word of God, there's absolutely nothing that we can, we can do. When we read in the book of Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 to 2, it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Let us all open our Bibles in the book of, 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 of Genesis. Quickly open our Bibles in the book of Genesis. If you have a chapter 1, if you have a chapter praise the Lord for his mercies endured forever. Hallelujah. In the beginning, God prepared. He formed, he fashioned, and created the heavens and the earth. That was God's creation, Bazalan. And it says, the earth was without form and empty. And the darkness was upon the face of the great deep. Even the spirit of God was moving, or it was hovering over the face of the waters. So my point today when God saw that the earth is without form, when God saw that the earth is empty, Azanya Adula Fat Ario, Bonang the earth, it's empty. Oh, Bona Hohobi Hakagang. But the word of God says, when God saw that the earth is empty, He spoke into existence what He wanted to see. And the word of God says, He said, he said, let, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light that it was good, suitable, and pleasant. And he approved it. So when God saw a situation that was not pleasing to him, as I do that, I discuss but when God saw a situation that was not pleasing, he spoke what he wanted to see in the situation. He didn't repeat the problem. The problem was that it was dark. Maybe it was, if it was you and me, we would have said, Ooh, but God never said that. He spoke words that brought life. And today I am here to say, God is saying whatever situation that we are faced up with as a church, he has, given, he has given us the words, his words that are spirit, his words that are life, his words that are able to change situations around. And his word is in his word. And his word is the bread of life that came and dwelt among men. The word of God says in the book of John, chapter, John chapter 1, it says the word of God came, verse 14, and dwelt among men. So he is the word of God. Jesus Christ, the word of God. So as I learned in this time, you move from one channel of news to another. What is it benefiting us? How is it helping us? Is it bringing, is it building us up? As the word of God in the book of Jude, Jude chapter 1, verse 20, it says, brethren, build yourself up. By praying in the, whole, in, in the Holy Spirit. We're building ourselves up by praying in the Holy Spirit. And by studying the word of God. And by speaking the word of God. We don't repeat. We don't repeat the negativity that we see. But we speak what changes the situation. Which is the word of God. That is active. Haribala iri. The word is alive. According to Hebrews 4, verse 12. Lekai Bula Bazalan, Hebrews 4, verse 12 says, For the word of God is alive and active. Ay, Bazalan. Have you ever seen someone, let me personalize it, where have you ever seen a person that is alive, that is active? You can see even the, the way they move, that they are alive and they are active. And the Bible says the word of God is alive. And it's active. And it's sharp. It's sharper than any double-edged sword. 
it penetrates even to dividing the soul and the spirit joints and the marrow. Why must it? Why must it? Why must, must it penetrate and divide the soul and the spirit? And my understanding is that a man is a tripod being. A man is a spirit. A man has a soul. A man lives in the body. But you find that most of the time, the spirit and the mind, they're not in agreement. But according to the word of God, when the word has been ministered, when the word has been spoken, it's able to separate between the soul, between the thoughts, between the spirit, between the mind, between what is happening up here, so that it can be able to the humble The meaning of that it says it is sharper than any double edged sword. It penetrates to dividing the soul and the spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts. Ay, Bazalwan. Our thoughts. Hey, the battle is in the mind. Things that are not in line with the word of God. However, God says no. We can repair this. So that what you believe here, because whatever that you think about, it's what you're going to say. Whatever that you think about, it's what's going to come out of your mouth. But when you think the thought that is coming, you'll be able to speak the word of God into situations that needs change. They don't need your reasoning. They don't need what how. They don't even need our intellect. They need the word of God. The word of God is powerful. The word of God is, is alive. The word of God is able to change situations. We want all the updates. Let me tell you, child of the living God, the only update that you need right now is the refreshing word. refreshes your soul. It refreshes your mind. It makes you think thoughts as in line with the word of God. When we read, it's, I'm just going to explain the meaning of John 17. Verse 24. No, no. Um, excuse me. Of Hebrews 4, verse 12. The two edged sword refers to how harsh and filtered truth is when you hear it from Jesus. Sometimes when God speaks his word, it is not nice. It's not what we want to hear, but it's what we have to hear. It says to the truth, the truth cuts deep. It pierces even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. This refers to how Jesus, when looking at us, can separate who we are, who, who you are as a spirit, and what you think as a man. So that tells us, Bazalan Guti, we are the spirit, but as a man we think, as people we think, but sometimes the thoughts that we think are not in line with the word of, of, with the word of God. And then Harry Bala Mole, more Ephesians 6, verse 16. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Aye, Bazalwan. In addition to, to all this, take the shield of faith. Only with faith you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Now we see the word of God here. It's a loser. As a weapon, it says it is the sword of the spirit. It is the word of God. And when we have the faith, we have the faith, which is the shield, which is the shield of faith. We take the shield of faith. 
we have the word of God as the sword of the spirit. Whatever thought that comes to our mind that exalts itself above the knowledge of God, we are able to fight it with the word of God. And pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayer and request. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all of God's people. I believe Horuduti Mohaemo, you are praying. You are praying for the world. You are praying for the leaders. You are praying for God's people with all kinds of prayers. The Bible encourages us to keep on praying in the spirit. And we keep on worshiping God. Worship is another time. It's a weapon. It's, it's a weapon that you can use to fight the thoughts that comes to your mind. The thoughts that contradicts the word of God. The thoughts that says Mudimo that the thoughts the Pirisanang Lilintola Mudimo. And then when we read Galatians 5, verse 17. Galatians 5.17 says, For the flesh lusted against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another, so that you cannot do the things that you would. And the spirit, excuse me, so that you will not do the things that you would. And the spirit gives us desires that are opposite of what the sinful nature desires. Ay, Bazalwan. We are spiritual beings. And the word of God says we don't wage war as the world does. But the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. But they are mighty through the pulling down of strongholds. They are strongholds, Bazalwan. Just like as faith cometh by hearing, so is fear it cometh by hearing. So my question is this morning, what are we feeding on? What are we feeding our minds with? What are we meditating upon? Because when God spoke to Joshua, he says, Joshua, do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Instead, think about it day and night. Day and night. It will make you prosperous. So, what are we thinking about? What is, what is crowding our minds during this time? Is it fear? I've heard somebody saying, That's not how we think, Bazalan. I said when I started, when the fishermen, they take time to fix their nets. This is the time to fix our nets. This is the time to see God. This is the time to know more sa tsama yang handle teng re lukise. More tsa mileng ra pota teng ke nako ya hore dule re lukise. This is not time to be looking at who says what. I've realized that everybody these days obo hlale and everybody's got an opinion. But the only opinion that matters right now is what God says to us. What's important to us right now is what God says in his word. When Jesus speaks in the book of John, he says the words that I speak to you are spirits and they are life. So the words that God speak, gives us, the same spirit that we are talking about today, the word of God says it's the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. And the Bible says, if that spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives within us, he's able to give life to our mortal bodies. Now I'm speaking to you who says now nah, I'm above the age. An age that says it's a high risk age. You have the spirit of God within you. The spirit of God that raised Christ from the dead is living within you. And I say to you today, focus on that. 
That is what is important. Ke go rona le matla a tlusitse a tsusitse mo rena Jesu bafung. Bona gona ngo fa matla mmele wa hao. Tlohela di stats. Tswa ho di statistics. The only statistics that you must be concerned about is what Jesus is saying to you and what he has said in his word. Arimantu ana ke lena ya ngona. They are spirit and they are life. But it's up to us. We can see it when we read the word of God, of God in the book of Romans chapter 12 verse 2. It do not conform to the pattern of this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. The renewal of the mind is something that we doesn't do. We don't do once in a while. No, today I feel like I'm going to renew my mind. It's something that we do daily. We renew our minds daily. Before we talk about what is happening out there in the world, just find out what daddy is about to say to you. When you wake up in the morning, just speak to the father. Speak to Jesus. Welcome the Holy Spirit. Let him be your guide. Pray in the spirit. Never cease to pray. But speak the word of God all the time. Whenever you open your mouth, speak the word of God. Speak to one another with, her, with hymns, psalms, and spiritual songs. Just speak the word let us stick to the word of God. Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. It says, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Think about such things. Before you're going to open your mouth, ask yourself this one question. Is it true? Is it noble? Is it right? Is it pure? Is it lovely? Is it admirable? If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, the Bible says, think about such things. Think about such things. Think if what I'm thinking about will benefit me. The word of God says, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So whatever we say, comes from the thoughts that we've been thinking about. Whoever is going to come out of this situation Allah right, it's somebody who will choose not to crowd their minds or their spirit that are negative to what the word of God is saying. I said the book of Jude chapter 1 verse 20. It says build yourself up in the most holy faith by praying in the spirit. You know, these days, everybody's active, including me. <laughs> yeah, I walk. Yeah, now I can even walk. I walk. I don't run. And don't say I say, I run. I don't run. I walk. But now I can even walk five kilometers or more a day. Because I'm training my physical body. And now I am active. I'm training my physical body. But the Bible says in the book of Jude, you can do the same to your spirit man. You can build him up. You can shape him. And it says the way you're shaping him is when you pray in the Holy Ghost. When you pray in the Spirit, you are shaping your spirit man. Why do we need to shape our spirit man? So that we can be sensitive to the word of God. So that we can be sensitive to the leading and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. He's our friend. He's been sent to lead us, to guide us into all truth. To reveal the secret things of God unto us. Do not despair. God is on our side. Do not despair. God is on our side. And the Bible says, and the Bible says, if God be on our side, who can be against us? 
if God be on our side, they can mock us. Yes, they're mocking us. But God is on our side. They're mocking the church of Jesus Christ. And we're not going to advocate for Jesus. He's the king of kings. He's the lord of lords. But we're going to focus on our lane. We're going to run on our lane. We're going to run speaking his word. Speaking his word. Praising him. Lifting the name of Jesus higher and higher and higher and higher. Because he, we have been given the name that is above every name. The name of Jesus. That, that the name of Jesus. Every knee will bow. If coronavirus has a name, if it has knees, it's going to bow to the name of Jesus. And it's going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. For we have been given the name that is above all names. It is the most powerful name. The name of Jesus. You know, when I think of Jesus, he wants us to take him very serious. He, I think of, of, of the book of John, we can read it. Basal and John chapter 6. We can just go through to the word of John chapter 6. Uh, hallelujah. God is good. He's an amazing God. He's wonderful. Eh, we are standing kulun kulu bazalwan. We are standing with Jehovah. Futa gazenzisi. Ufuna si kala la paya na gu gu twenty nine. And then kita tewa liona hanyani liona hanyani hanyani. But John chapter six, we all know the story. Is when Jesus was feeding uh, the the five thousand. And then, uh, and the fish. Fishing and the tar. But my, my story is here. Jesus Christ went about ministering and, 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 and healing the sick. And there were people that were following Jesus because he fed them food. And, and, and Jesus didn't get excited when he has followers. Maybe if it was us, really, but above the Facebook, Lady what, what, Nerito Tabarer and Lady followers, he was not excited. And when Jesus saw that these people, they're not following me because, because of the words that I carry, he started to address the situation. And verse 29, Jesus replied, This is the work or service that God asks of you, that you believe in the one whom he has sent, that you cleave to, that you trust, that you rely on, and have faith in him. He says, This is what, this is my assignment, that you believe in the one whom he has sent, and that is Jesus Christ. That you cleave, that you trust, and you rely on. What are we relying on today, Bazalan? I said to you, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so is fear. It comes by relying on bad news. So, but Jesus Christ says, is that you may believe in him, cleave, trust, and rely on him. And when he spoke this, I'm just going to paraphrase the scripture. When he spoke, he says, I am the bread of life. The bread of life that came from heaven. And whoever eats of this bread will never thirst or hunger ever again. And some of the people, Banabamo Latella, when he started to say that because they took it, he was saying literally eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. Some of them, they stopped following Jesus. Because it was, they couldn't understand it. Because spiritual things are spiritually descend. 
We need to spend time him with him so that we can hear him when he speaks to us. They didn't comprehend what he was saying. The Bible says even some of his disciples, they left. Because Nabasa would you see easy. But what he was saying, to cleave to him, we breathe him, we leave Christ. When the apostle puts it, he puts it very well. He says, in him I move, in him I live, in him I have my being, in Jesus Christ. He's the one who gives us strength. He's the one who gives us power. He's the one who gives us wisdom to stand. And after we have done everything, to stand. What are we relying on today? Are we relying on, on his word? Or what are we relying on? But what Jesus is saying to us today, Kibata Ribale verse, uh, verse 63 yeah, John 6, and take it more, John 6. 63, and then Retabalali, Lee 68. 63, Eri, it is the Spirit who gives life. He is the life giver. Gebala from Amplified. It is the Spirit who gives life. He is the life giver. The flesh conveys no benefit whatever and there is no profit in it. The words, the truths that I have been speaking to you, they are spirit and they are life. They are spirit. Listen, Wanamuren. Jesus Christ, heaven and earth will pass away and I'm so sober when I know what the things of the world don't matter. But he says his word will remain forever. So sipila ngezu ilga ngulungulu. Sipila ngamandla that are found in the scriptures. Zisnigeza amandla. Bona harit habi. Let me say something else. Because God has not given us the spirit of fear. Harit habi. Whether we are in this body or not in this body, we still live for him. Haritz Habe Bazalon. Kitere Badile 63. Let's go to 68. Now, let me start from 67. Like I said earlier on, Hori, go 66. After this, Many of his disciples drew back, returned to their old associations, and no longer accompanied him. Ba mutuka la ba rai tabe na yebo itata ye. Rona rekasi khoni. Sixty-seven. Jesus said to the twelve, "Will you also go away? And do you too desire to leave me?" Wa bo tamre na Jesus. Lelo na leba tlo tamai. Simon Peter answered. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words. You have the message of eternal life. Are my God. How am I? Because you have the word. You have the word of eternal life. So, God has given us his word. Rekaya kai. Nesizu lu uti singaya api. Nkosi. Singaya api ngoguba mazuk pila. Atola gala guena. Siti nguji yesu basalwan. All this thing that I've said today. It speaks to one thing. That we need Jesus. The Holy One of Israel. We need Alpha. We need Omega. We need His word. Think about these things. Whatever is true, whatever is trustworthy, think about these things. There's something that I want to show us in the book of Matthew before I close. Chapter 16. 
It's not on my notes, but it comes to my mind right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I just want to emphasize that renew our minds according to the word of God. It is important for us to renew, to have renewed minds according to the word of God. And you will see why. When we read in the book of Matthew, chapter 16, you know the story, I'm not going to go through it. But Jesus Christ was asking his disciple, verse 15, Uri Mobona, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Wow. Isn't that awesome? Even Jesus thought, wow, this is awesome. Peter, Peter, wang wang kalukanya, ya no. Then Jesus answered, blessed, happy, fortunate, and to be envied, are you Simon Barjona? For flesh and blood have not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. You see, Jesus Christ was able to see that whatever Peter is saying right now, it doesn't come from his mind. But God has revealed this to him. He says, blessed are you. But, but for, the, for flesh and blood. Now when he says flesh and blood, he's referring to our thoughts, to our minds. Has not revealed this to you. But my father who is in heaven. So what does that tell us? It tells us that our minds and our thoughts can tell us something that is contrary to the word of God. But it's up to us if we continue, Bazalan. Ribata wuta man, hey say, and everybody would tell you now all of a sudden, hey, but about somebody can, babang bari 5D, babang bari what what. But if you're gonna sit and and hear what God says in His word. And build yourself up in the spirit. And hear what God says. Verse 17. Verse 18. And I tell you, you are Peter. Jesus is excited, man. Peter is excited, man. Peter is excited, man. Hey, he says, and I tell you, you are Peter. A large piece of rock in Greek. And on this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hate, the powers of it, infernal region, shall not overpower it or be strong to its detriment or hold against it, which is true. It's true, Swain. Because Jesus said it. The revelation knowledge that we have that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. The gates of hell will not overpower it. Verse 19, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth must be what is already loosed in heaven. Kimrana Jesu. Then he instantly and strictly charged and warned the disciples to tell no one that he was Jesus Christ. All right, so Jesus is excited. So verse 21, verse 21. From that time forth, Jesus began clearly to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders and the high priest, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day, be raised from the dead. This is what's going to happen now. Now I want you to look at this. Verse 22. The same Peter, then Peter took him aside to speak to him. Privately, and began to, to reprove and charge him sharply, saying, God forbid, this must never happen to you. How? 
The same guy a few minutes ago was filled with the Holy Spirit and power and revelation knowledge was flowing through him is now rebuking the Spirit of God. But Jesus was able to see that. But Jesus turned away from Peter and said to him, Get behind me, Satan. So what does this tell us? Jesus was able, There was another spirit in operation, Manjagu Peter. That was not the same spirit as Gankulungul. But Jesus was able to tell, Luguti, so kulumungulungulu manch. Haibu. Utesu Kresu rebukes Peter. He says, Get behind me, Satan. How? Sishulwa yin. Oguza the thoughts that are contradicting the word of God and say, Get behind me, devil. This is not from God. You're not going to sit there and entertain a vow. Hey, I'm seven zinibatis is already juice. Hey, I'm seven zinibati. We are pella. Hey, I'm mega scissors. Get behind me, Satan. You should be able to tell those thoughts. The Bible says we are able to pull down strongholds, imaginations that exalt itself above the knowledge of God. We have authority to pull down those strongholds that exalt itself above the knowledge of God. We should be able to see Uti Mandela Agusa Kulumi Unkulungulu Ukuluma Usatan. Utesu Christ was able to see that. I'm gonna read it all. But Jesus turned away from Peter and said to him, Get behind me, Satan. You are in my way. Hey man, as in you are in our way. Zima and Leleni ye tu. Zima and Leleni ye tu na logun kunukula funugu guanza empil. Unkunukulu kali silenga man lagamo inwele and you can stand and and conquer. You know you can trample over serpents. You can you can you can drink poisonous things and they will not by any means hurt you. But when the enemy comes to you and says, "Hi bo, we na we are entertainer." And God says, you have the authority to say, get behind me, Satan. We have been given the authority. Bazalwan. Like I said, he loves us so much. He loves us so much. Day and night. As it's been said in the book of Joshua, chapter 1. You know, it was easy for Joshua to think he was going to succeed a very powerful man of God who walked, who walked with God, Moses. He was a young man, the Bible says. So, Bogulula Guyutanga Balega at Minangi Konugans, Alenda Balena, Nkalutinibizabob Aroni, Dalaba Konagulendela, Nipumegimi, but no. He listened to what God was saying. Now you are going to take over. But one thing that I can tell you is that the one thing that will make you to make it in this journey is the word. He says, do not depart from it. Meditate on it day and night. It will make you prosperous. Hey. Ona sabuika prosperity ari chelete fela. Ona buaga prosperity of even the enemies when they attack him, when they attack the Israelite. He was saying you will conquer only when you look into this perfect mirror, only when you look into this word, only when you meditate upon it. The meditation has the ability to change how we think. The word of God says it transforms us. It transforms Isintela Estabangayo. It changes our vocab so that we can be able to speak the word of God in situations whether Ziavuma or Azivumi. But we speak the word of God that is able to change our situations. Besayavuma. Besavumelana. Nalok unkulunkulu akshoyo. The word of God. 
It has the ability to do that. It has the ability to change. Umuntu, ugutapile, ngogwentando kankulunkulu. The word of God. So God says, take this sword. I'm, I'm arming you now. Take the sword of the spirit. Take the shield of faith. Utu viga. Ubu lathelizi. Utu viga ngokola. U lathelizi ilgankulunkulu. Jesus is the Lord, Bazalwan. And as I close, I want to say to you, Uncle Uncle Yaktanda, he sent his only begotten son so that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. So Namlanj, it's an opportunity for you to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and as your Savior. Itubala kuleli. Because lembi eskulu mangayo, angea kukwa zugu ingoba, ngapandle kwe zulga nkulunkulu. Kantinalo izulga nkulunkulu, siya tola la pezu in the book of Acts. Kutiko nindota, ea ilfunda, Religiously so, but I understand until Uncle Tumeli Naguyake, Ogut am baptized in the Holy Spirit, Lizo was Gutilembulwe, Guye. Now you are, I'm giving you an opportunity to accept Jesus. I'm telling you, I call you a son, yes, it's good and well, but this is an opportunity for you. Uguti Mofunda, Le Lizu Gankulunkulu, Mofunda, Le Mipalo, Izo was Guti, Yembulwe, Guye. A better understanding of the word of God. So if today it is the desire of your heart to pray this prayer with me. It is Gankulunkulu. Umuntu ukholwa. Uyezwa izu Gankulunkulu shunya yelu. Besaya kholwa ngentliziyo. Besaya pimisela ngende bezo mlomo wake. Ugutu Jesu Christu ingosi. Namhlanje ulizwile izulu kankulunkulu lishunya elo aglendao. Nika lukulege. Lomkulego wa ganye nami. Iti nkosu jesu. Nyagwa mugela. Njenge nkosi. Nomsindi isi. Wempilo yami. Ngena ngapaga tigimi. Ubuse. Ungenze logo tandugu tingibe igona. Amen. Guzo kulega mina. I thank you, Nkosiami. For Mtana wako, mshambe mwenye, mshambe babili, mshambe banini. Kota uoba bonayo, uoba ziyo, Nkosiami. I pray that you enter into their homes and give them peace that is far beyond what the human mind can comprehend. Manti, Nkosiami, siyazu guti wena. Uyasniga ukonda, ukungale kukonda kwa bantu. I pray that in Kosiam Segal Zuli Zugankulunkulu, Uzo Shala Ezwin Lako, Uzo Kulega Umfundi Selon and Kosiam. I pray your protection upon them in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, I take this time to pray for your children. I pray for Abantana Bakwek, Amen Liga Jesu Christu. I pray your healing power upon them. I pray that you heal their minds. I pray that you heal their thoughts. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray that as the word has been ministered to them, it is an incorruptible seed. It will generate, almighty God. It will produce fruits, fruits that will last. In the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord. Amen.